Now you listen to me, listen to me real good. I've told you once, I said it a thousand times. You get out of those pagan, satanic, religious, Christian churches. Christians do not follow the commandments of the Bible. Christians do what they want to do. They make up their own laws, their own rules, and their own regulations. Come out of her, my people, and come out from among them. And it's real simple and easy to ascertain who are these people you need to come out from? Easy. Number one, if they keep Sunday, that's an automatic sign that you need to not have any fellowship with these commandment-breaking, wicked deceivers and seducers and bewitchers of the truth. Simple. Let me do a disclaimer here. If you get offended, if you have an electric magnetic shock while you're sitting in that chair, <laughs> realize and know that those are impulses. They're not EMPs. They're impulses with agreements you have made in the past. That when a law comes, it's there to discharge those impulses. And to create a new you. See, what y'all desire to do is upgrade you. <clears throat> you know what I mean about upgrade you? Every word of Yah is pure. You know what the Bible says? If you can't stand before a man's judgment, how do you think you're going to fare with him? And our judgment is there to just motivate you to be obedient to Yah. That's what all this preaching is about. <clears throat> Let's go back over the instructions that Saul gave the younger men that he had already ministered to and ordained. He said, preach the word. Preach the what? Word. The word. Hmm? In the beginning was the word. So preach who? The word. So, and that word is Yah. Isn't that right? So preach Yah. Y'all get it? When you're preaching, be instant. In season and that means when you like it and when you don't like it. Right now, we're in this dead season. I don't like it. Regardless, the word still got to go forth. Y'all get it? Huh? You get it? Here's the next one. Reprove. Who likes that? Reprove? You know, reprove, we take it the wrong way. It's just there to actually just help put you on line. There's nothing negative about it. Nobody's trying to diminish you or make you feel bad. I can admit, I'm an ignorant man, and I still have many failures. I still have a, a little way to go for perfection. Might as well say a long way, but I'm striving. Are you following me? As long as you're talking to me with sugar and honey on your lips... I'm not going to take you serious. You don't ever take that Dairy Queen blizzard with that squirt of fudge, fudge in it as something that will mess you up, do you? Hmm? Keep on eating them. Keep eating them. And do it every day and see what type of shape you end up in. Uh oh. You you notice they don't never make Turner Green Blizzards? <laughs> huh? Spinach collards. 
you, they won't sell. Somebody called Dairy Queen Corporation tell them, hey, we got a new product for you. Collard greens, okra, spinach, greens blizzard. <laughs> oh, you out of your mind. Tell me, come from the whey protein from Australian beef. All grass fed. That product will rot. Yes. Before people even buy it. So if you got honey, you got sugar, oh, it tastes good. Oh, you love eating it all day long, but it's not beneficial for you. Because the Bible even said with honey, just a what? A little bit. And we. <laughs> and almost every setting in it. Amazing. See all my thing? So when you get reproved, Slight a monster, just the other. Hey, look, you're veering a little bit. This is the right course, right? This is the way walk in it. Repro Next one is what? Rebuke. Who likes that one? Anybody? Who loves being rebuked? Raise your hand. So there's three, four lies in the whole place. Nobody, your spirit doesn't, it does not like rebuke in any way, shape, fashion, or form, even if it's right. Did y'all hear what I said? Even if the rebuke is right, it, you still don't, you don't like it. Your flesh hates it. It takes a little while for the spirit man to swallow it. it Oh, it was good for me. <laughs> it was good for me. God! And the same Bible that we got in front of us says that open rebuke. What kind of rebuke? Now, how many people want to be rebuked openly? Look, 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 see? I go back to Dairy Queen. See, uh, wait a minute, wait a minute. Uh, come on. Open rebuke is better than. Is better than secret love. Now, how many people love to get rebuked openly then? What's wrong with us? We got it bad. When it's good for us, we don't like it. When it's bad for us, we don't like it. We're schizophrenic. It also says, rebuke them sharply. How? And the word of God is quick and powerful, sharpening any what? What's the purpose of rebuke them sharply? So that they may be what? Sound, Sound in the what? In this blessed assurance. All right, now who wants to be rebuked sharply? Man, we don't want nothing, do we? <laughs> we just want to exist. And everything that I have read and everything we just quoted from the rebuke is all for our benefit. It actually helped make you a better person. See, if you do this secret rebuke over here in this corner right over here, and, and, and it's just you and one-on-one -on -one counsel, you understand what I mean? That don't do you no good. Because, see, you have, still have a lot of wiggle room. But if you rebuke you openly... And everybody else is sitting around watching. We got witnesses of that rebuke. Yes. 
And, and that is designed for us to be able to watch and see how you walk out your life from that rebuke. Yes, sir. See, if it's over there in that corner, nobody knows how you got rebuked and stuff. But if you're rebuked openly, then everybody is going to be able to witness that rebuke. And if any of us have ever been rebuked, uh, we don't feel good when one of our brothers and sisters are getting rebuked. Hardly anybody ever feels sorry for the one that's doing the rebuking. They're usually public enemy number one. That's when you go, after you get finished getting rebuked, you go seek to justify yourself with somebody, get somebody on your side. Preach the word, be us in season, and out of season, reprove, rebuke, and exhort. Is that right? And do it with all long what? So who's suffering then? The one that's doing the rebuke. Wow. But see, you think you're suffering greater than the one doing the rebuke because you're on the receiving end of it. Don't y'all chasing those whom he's loved? Yes. Yeah, it says y'all, but not you. Preach the word. Oh, look at him. Oh, look, look at him. How are you going to experience that word that is sharpening any two-edged sword? You never get that when you're reading the Bible. No, you don't. You never get that piercing. When you're reading the scripture, no, you do not. You can listen to radio broadcasts and you still don't get that kind of oof and cutting. Well, boy, when we sitting in here, why do you think y'all want us to meet on a, and forsake not the fellowship of the assembly as the manner of some is? See, this is designed to keep you in the faith. The feast days are designed to keep you in the faith. Somebody asked a question last night. I said, I hope you're able to make it. Y'all ain't never hear me say that. From, from one dead season up until the past, I said, I hope you're able to make it. Because it's the time where you can relax. It's what the Gentiles want you to do. We don't have these feast days before our eyes. To be invited to God's feast. Nobody ever feels sorry for pastor for having to rebuke. Nobody ever feels sorry for elders for having to rebuke. No you don't. No you don't. You immediately become one with somebody else's pain. Especially if you have the same pain. That you've been insulating and protecting. And running dirty. And do it with what? All long suffering. Who's suffering? Me or you. How many of y'all got children? How many times that you look at them and you know you need to whoop them, but man, you try your best to just, well, maybe if I just stay my hand this time right here, they'll be corrected by their own behavior. Because they will remember the last time I got a hold of them. You ever do that? You, ever do? you think it lodges, don't you? And I ask you a question. Does it ever lodge? No. What do they do? They take that as a pass. Hey, I got away. I can still relax. I don't have to be as sober. I can just... And go and mess up again. And now they start developing the doctrine that ain't nothing going to happen to me. Did I say something wrong? No. Isn't that amazing? Huh? How many times do you think Yah stays his judgment from us? Until the point he gets so fed up. Oh, mercy. Huh? We never, we never take into account him. All about me. I'm hurt. I'm sorry. My feelings. What about him? You ain't never heard children after another child has got finished being beaten by their parents. 
go over and say, your mom and daddy was wrong. They just evil. When my dad was whooping my brothers, I was smiling. Get them again. But they some evil little bastards. Get them. I had evil brothers. They would just lie just so I can get a whooping too, even though they were getting one. That's all, that's all right. I said, they got to go to work. <laughs> Nobody ever takes into account the one that has to give out the punishment. The world punishes us unmercifully. They don't care nothing about it. We have fathers that's chastening us. According to their pleasure. He does it for our salvation. And we never once take into account this structure that he has set up. In order to keep us all in line. So we can get to the kingdom and rule. You know that one day you're going to be judging angels. Are you in any condition right now to judge an angel? No, you can't do that right now y'all. Come on. That's why we have to strive in it. And I say it again, nobody, nobody ever takes into account the one who has to do the rebuking. They're the ones that have to be long-suffering. Why? Because if you're without chastisement, you're no longer what? Sons, but then what? Bastard. A bastard is someone who resists correction. Because if you don't rebuke, if you don't do it with all long suffering, the scriptures go on to say, for the time will come that they will not endure sound doctrine. See, when we were in our own land, you couldn't run over to the heathens. That's true. If you ran over to the heathens, we got wind for it. We just took a spear and thrust you through with it. You've been immersed and soaked in heathenism for the last 5,000 years. Because our people have been rebellious. And what mindset do you think you operate from? Heathenism. What is your automatically default mechanism? Your heathenism. It shows up. It gives you all your liberties, your freedoms. Even though out of the other side of our neck we say, we're bond servants. We different nothing from servants. We no boy, ain't we? Is that us? So when you get sick and tired of this reprove, rebuke, and this exhorting, then we go and look for someone that says what we want them to say. For the time will come when they will not endure sound teaching. And they will heap to themselves teachers having itching ears. And then what happens after that? You go straight to destruction. Have we ever read that before? In the book? Whoever read, who's ever read that passage before? Anybody read that passage before? So tell me, where did I misrepresent that passage? Hmm? See, you read it, but you didn't get it the way this preaching. No, you didn't. Uh uh. Uh uh. See, this brings impact. Y'all know what he's doing. Why do you think all the prophets got stoned? Why do you think Jeremiah said, Nope, not me? He knew how people was because he was one of them. Moses said, hey, uh, Y'all said, All right, Moses, you're going to be my custodian. Of all. I, 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 I can't speak. I can't speak. I can't speak. That's right. <laughs> Did y'all miss all this? Fuzzy, don't worry about it. I got you covered. <laughs> I'm all like, <laughs> I wonder if we ever read this book. In other words, I can't think of a man that was ever called, really truly called of y'all, that even wanted to go.
Because y'all's people are something else. The book says, and which of the prophets have you not stoned? Let me see, prophets. Yahweh's mouthpieces. Yahweh's word coming out of flesh. So were they really stoned in the prophets? Or were they stoning Yahweh himself? See, they thought they were hating men, but they hated the word. That was coming out of man. The same way that Moshe got provoked and smitten the rock. When he should have just spoke to it. Commanded. That's what we do. You fools. And you slow at heart. You do always resist. The Holy Spirit. Your fathers did it. And so do you. You ever heard that before? Yeah. See? See what the impact of preaching does? Yeah. Takes away the glory, don't it? See, y'all got this design, this program all, all laid out. I'm going to take someone just like them, put them up in front of them and tell them how wicked they are. And then they're going to look at him and say, you wicked too. And he's going to say, yeah, I know. And now what's the excuse? <laughs> we to the point now that even if we have examples in front of us, it don't even motivate us. See, if you're a good example, you take away all the excuse. In other words, that's nothing for you to have a complaint about then. Oh. See, now it's no longer that God's will is not being operated here on this earth. Now it has to do with your will. All this finger pointing and blame shifting. and Somebody said to me on the internet, you need to be more like Jesus. I said, I thought I was. Well, you need to learn how to talk. I said, teach me. What's my problem? What I have? Well, the way you talk, the way you put things, what's the way I put them? I'm still waiting for this condemnation. It's just the way you say it. That's why they say it. I said, when did I ever lie to you? Silent. Silent. Your heart is deceitful. Above all things. And it's desperately wicked. We could bring in a speaker. And they'll tell you everything your heart want to hear. And you think you have the Holy Spirit. Some of you will get up and do the Holy Ghost dance and run the aisle. Let me see. When Dad Dow used to whoop us, the only time I had to fire the Holy Spirit on me is when that heat was on my rear end. It caused me to move. They missed it. It went right over their head. Y'all truly missed it. You should see them thousand yard stairs. You missed it. Should be rejoicing when you're getting chased. Y'all chase you. Pow! Ah! Oh, hallelujah! You love me. I tell you, man, this is this is a struggle this morning. This is a struggle this morning. Look at this. How many of you ever danced and cut a rug when you was getting your hind end whooped? Could you feel the heat? Could you feel the fire? Now you want somebody to cut on the room, air conditioner, 
Put it in your temperature. <laughs> Bring your glass iced tea. Does that make you move too? I tell you, we got bad. We're bad. We're bad. I'll give you an example. Do you know how people go to the battle of Jericho? They walk around Jericho how many times? Then the walls come what? At destruction, they rejoice. And you don't rejoice at the destruction of your flesh. Yeah, first that which is natural, then that which is spiritual. Oh, look. Oh, oh. I'm trying to get to this message. But there's a spirit in here. Paul said, I take pleasure in my infirmities. You are uh -uh. You're going to insulate yourself. You're going to protect yourself. Wrong mindset. Wrong mindset. Oh, murder. Y'all know that the Holy Spirit talk right to us, though. You know that, right? Mm. Don't get it wrong. Don't sit up and see this veil of flesh and think it ain't the word coming forth. He, 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 he talking. What infirmities? Shipwreck. That's the two. Beatings. Fastings. Impels a countryman. Impels a brother. You. You the other way around. See? Gentile mind. Y'all don't see how this stuff just rolling? There ain't, ain't no script up here. I ain't got no, no boom mic in my ear. We better comprehend what the most high y'all is trying to deal with us. I mean, I want to cross over to the other side. See what I mean? We can read the word, and you should. The idea of reading the word is so that the Ruach in you can have something to recall rather than a bunch of junk and mess. See, you can tell when you don't have the word in you in that area. Because that flesh that is strong in that area, it'd be the first thing to kick when the word comes. First thing to justify you when the word comes. First thing to start rationalizing when the word comes. That's how you know the word is not in you in that area of your life. But if your heart is filled with the word in that area, you'll be sitting there agreeing. Hallelujah. Ain't that the truth? See, when the truth comes and you know that you need change in that area and the word is really truly filled your heart, you will have agreement with y'all. You'll like, hallelujah. Ain't that the truth? I'm wicked. I, man, I need a change. You ever done that before? Some of you got to remember that miracle moment, don't you? I've done that before many times. I hear that word that come rebuking and pray. Oh, ain't that the truth? Why? The word is done filled your heart in that area. The hypocrites got a portion pointed to them. Y'all think it's easy to come up here sap without the sap and speak to y'all like this? Talk to all Israel like this who's listening? The more people come, the harder it gets. Y'all's people got to be saved. He, gonna ha he know them that are his. He going to have his people. <clears throat> yeah, he will. He's going to have his people. He said it already. He ain't looking for the many either. None but the righteous is going to be delivered. None but the and what is that righteousness? It's of him. If you're not just like him, you're going to be delivered. Uh-oh. 
your life won't be hid. Nothing between your soul and your Savior. Now what's preventing you to getting close to him? Mm, good questions, isn't it? He already knows the answer, but he wants you to know the answer. You see, Job, we read it. We'd heard the story preached a hundred times. Y'all's testimony of Job was a righteous man. Wasn't another man like him in all his generation. Job was so righteous, so powerful, so obedient to Yah that even the satanic realm knew that they couldn't touch him. But Job did not know that all that stuff was in his heart. Just like you don't know. That all this stuff is in your heart. Job spent 30 chapters murmuring, griping, complaining. Hmm? At the beginning he didn't charge y'all. He was challenging y'all because the Bible said, and in all this, Job sinned not with his mouth. He spent 30 something chapters murmuring, griping, and complaining. Justifying himself. And y'all had to finally come and speak to him himself. Then he decided to be quiet. How much talking are you doing? Justifying yourself. I promise you, you, we all don't want to hear y'all's voice like you think we do. I already got proof of that. Israel was, hey, sanctify yourself. Watch yourself. Third day, hey, hey. Y'all getting ready to talk to us. We going to the mountain, man. Oh, man. Hey, yeah. Y'all getting ready to talk to us. We ready, Moses. Mount starts quick. Thunder start roaring. Mountain start smoking. What do you think is going to happen when the king make a grand entrance? The earth was setting itself in order. He had to burn up the top of that mountain. He's got to purify it before he put his feet down. Why you think over the renewed covenant? It says you shall be filled with the Holy Ghost and with fire. You got to be purified for the Holy Spirit to come in. You got to get burned up. Everybody all excited. And the first thing he said is, Everybody took off running, trying to get away from the mountain. I don't even know why y'all told them, be careful that they don't come to these borders right here, because they ain't want no part to them borders. They were high telling it. They all, they all were happy until they heard his voice. Oh, the prophets even tell us that the day of Yahweh is a day of darkness. Don't think that everybody going to be doing a Holy Spirit dance. A day of gloominess. Matter of fact, it even says, woe unto you. That desire the day of Yah. In other words, woe to you that want to see him. 
Especially in your present condition. You want to bring your arrogant stuff up there because you feel the Holy Spirit and you speak in three tongues. You keep the commandments and you dress holy. And, and the, hey, all this warning is to you, Israel. Mm -mm -mm. Bro, say Matthew 24, verse 29. Y'all still love me? Yes, sir. We'll see. Because, you, hey, you got to prove them, don't you? Test them, try them. Still love y'all? Y'all never try to rehearse that thing in your mind to where Israel was sitting up here trying. They were happy to see y'all. They was excited. They got to the point, Moses, no more. No more, Moses. No more, Moses, please, begging him. Do not let him say another word to it. Don't let him talk. He keep talking. We're going to die. So that's what set apart holy really truly means. Moses wasn't afraid. Man, wait a minute. You asked for this. You asked for this. Oh, wait, no, you all are y'all's prophets. You all want to hear from him. You talk to us. <laughs> we will hear you. So with all these people saying, y'all say it, I'll oh, shut up. Y'all in sundry times. Spoken to us by the mouth of the prophets. But in these last days, he's spoken to us by what? His son. Oh. Mm. I thought y'all said y'all love y'all's word. Y'all should have been just, oh, ain't that yeah, glory. How they look? See, we still can't get the right response. Can't get so jacked up by the devil. Man, old bishop, you talk like y'all. You be sitting somewhere right there. I be like, yeah. I be having a revival, man. He just said, I get him walk. Mm, mm, mm. That is good. And everybody was in transgression sitting like you. <laughs> Nobody knows. We eating that word up. Maybe I was too stupid to know I was getting eaten up, but I loved the work. I loved it. Still do today. Everybody want to see y'all. Read what the Messiah said. Matthew 24, verse 29. Read. Immediately after. The what? The tribulation of those. Of those days. What's going to happen? Shall the sun be dark? The sun's going to be what? Darkened. Darkened. Read on. And the moon shall not give her light. The moon is going to stop shining. Come on. And the stars shall fall from heaven. Uh-oh. And the powers of the heavens shall be shaken. Read. And then shall, the, shall appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven. And then shall all the tribes of the earth mourn. They're going to rejoice. Mourn. Have a mighty growl. Mourn. Send presents each other. Mourn. Singing glory, hallelujah. Mourn. Jesus on the main line, tell them what you want. Mourn. He says all the tribes of the earth are going to mourn. Read on. And they shall see the Son of Man coming in the clouds of heaven with power. With what? Power. And what else? And great glory. And great glory. Go to Joel 2.32. I thought we said we read this book. And then they got people out there selling books and everything. They've been doing it for a long time. I, I've been against that book ever since the beginning. They come out of this book. Left behind. Everyone that wrote them books is going to be left behind. <laughs> These people are going to come up out in front of this holy Messiah. 
with their gods of rings in their hands, with their painted faces, the women with their head uncovered, with their stilettos and miniskirts, and men with their head covered, all these proud nations. What a rude awakening. Read. And it shall come to pass. What? That whosoever shall call on the name of Yahweh shall be delivered. Read. For in Mount Zion and in Jerusalem shall be deliverance. Shall be what? Deliverance. Come on. As Yahweh has said. What did he say? And in the remnant whom Yahweh shall call. Now go to verse 28. And it shall come to pass. Uh oh, you know whenever you hear, and it shall come to pass. That's when your finkster muscle should be tightening. You better get ready because he's getting ready to say something. Read. That I will pour out of my spirit. What? Upon all flesh. Uh huh. And your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Your old men shall dream dreams. Your young men shall see vision. Read on. And also upon the servants and upon the handmaids in those days will I pour out my spirit. Come on. And I will show wonders in the heavens. And wonders in the, in the heavens. He's going to show it now. And what else? And in the earth. And in the what? Earth. Earth. Blood. Uh, what? Blood. What? Blood. And blood is going to be up to the what bridle? Horses bridle. Horses, bridle, blood, and what else? And fire. And our yards are consuming what? Fire. Ooh and what else? And pillars of smoke. And the smoke from all their destruction is going to ascend. See, you read that first part of that prophecy, it was the day that you were filled with the Holy Spirit. But Yoel, just like the Messiah, just like the prophets all told us about the book of Hazum. Revelation. Yeah, he did. Never once ever wanted that out of our heart and our mind. No matter when you were born. You keep at the forefront of your spirit. Read. The sun shall be turned into darkness. Whoa. Sound like Messiah quoting somebody too, don't it? I wonder why. I wonder how did he know all that? How seeing that he has ne never been studied by us and never learned by us and he don't have letters from our colleges. Because that was a word. <laughs> Read on. And the moon into blood. My, 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 my. That means keep reading when I stop. Before the great and the terrible day of Yahweh comes. What kind of day is that, Brother Shane? Great and the terrible. Oh, well, I thought it was the, the good day. Great and the terrible. A terrible day? Terrible. Terrible? Terrible. There's a time of rejoicing for us. Uh, let me see. It is the goodness of Yah that leads thee to what? Uh, Yah's good when he leads you to and you don't even want to repent. So how would you know how good he is unless you can actually obtain repentance? Oh. Well, well, well. Look at here. Told you, we had a wrong response, wrong attitude. When y'all show you something about your wicked self, oh yeah, it's a heavy thing. You should be able to quickly go to rejoice it though because you, you know what? Could have left you in that wicked state though. Being deceived by your own self-righteousness. But he bought me out so I could go in. Yah's a good God. 
Yes, he is. I know Yah is a good God. Yes, he is. Oh, yes, he is. Oh, yes, he is. Well, we're getting some response. Oh, boy. Well, Pastor, if you would just put it a different way. What do you mean put it a different way? The Bible teaches you, you don't want our Charles to make songs and melodies in your heart. Don't sit up there and wait for me to hit an E string on a good top before you can dance. We're going to go on with this word right here, boy. I don't know how much I can take care of it, take of this. I'm getting chasing up here myself. We already said a word. Did we have said the word? We're going to see how many people are going to be motivated to go back and listen to this one. Huh? So, preach the word. Be us in this season, out of season. And we ain't talking about no 70 Chevelle super sport. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Even the children shout. Uh-oh, look at him looking.